Hello and welcome to Attacking Third on YouTube. We are so thrilled for you all to join us today because we are chatting about all things news and notes. We're going to touch on some NWSL news and some signings. We're going to touch on some soccer that took place globally. So make sure you subscribe to us and like this video. Drop us your thoughts in the chat about all of the news that has dropped over the last week or so. You know we love to hear from you. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Attacking Third. I'm Sandra Rita, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's segment, we've got news and notes for everyone. So a quick reminder to leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. We're also on YouTube, so subscribe to us here at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. Get all sorts of exclusive NWSL, uh, WSL, and all sorts of uh, previews, recaps, and uh, delicious, delicious content here. On Ooh, it's delicious. It's yummy. I just, I just love chatting all things soccer with you, buddy. I feel Me like, too. I feel like with the regular season for NWSL coming around, we've been hanging out a lot more, you know. <laughs> and I love to see your face, and I love to chat all things soccer with you. How are you doing today? Me too. Honestly, it's been lovely because we we were two episodes a week for a while there, which usually turned into three. But now that we're back, it's it's a lot of FaceTime, you and I. And thank God, because I love it. Um, I'm so excited for the season to come. I'm so excited. We're doing our previews. If you haven't checked them out already, we've got a lot of great content, team by team previews. We're deep diving into every single NWSL team, um, but not today, not on this midweek episode, because there's some news, there's some updates we've got to go through. And that's what I'm really kind of excited to hear your thoughts on some of it, because we haven't talked about it. We try to do that, yeah. keep our thoughts to the show. So they're fresh and we get fresh reactions from each other and from our, all of our listeners. Um, I'm good, you know, just getting ready for the spring like the the warm weather that type of thing and the oh my you're getting ready for march madness oh for sure um <laughs> yes for sure marquette men's basketball they're they're ready they've got the number one seed in the tournament um but they're not really projected to do well but we'll see you know across that's the bridge. That's... i got some people trolling me already about it it's oh fine. come on that's how the that's how the uh cinderella story starts right with the with the doubters right the projections and things like that we're here for it springtime means uh renewal so like new things coming our way new new uh march madness tournaments and of course the end of all regular season is on its way march 25th is when it's going to kick off of course you can catch all the action uh, across CBS Sports Networks and on Paramount Plus. And uh, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with some NWSL news for sure because uh, some uh, some record-breaking news a little bit to talk about. The uh, youngest ever signing uh, took place over uh, the course of last week or so. We're talking about midfielder Chloe Ricketts, 15-year-old midfielder Chloe Ricketts, inks a three-year deal that includes a fourth-year option with Washington Spirit, uh, officially the youngest player ever in NWSL history by three whole days. <laughs> to note, it's important to note, it was, a, it was a record previously hold by Portland Thorns midfielder Olivia Moultrie. And uh, Rick is breaking, uh, breaking that record by, uh, by three days. I love that they noted that within yeah. the release as well. They're like 280 something whole days. <laughs> the comparison. Is, those three days count because it's a new record. A new club has that record. Um, it's important. I think honestly to note that this is a sophomore yeah. in high school and she is not only signed training with an NWSL team, but she signed a contract and not just a one-year contract with an option, but I think that's pretty cool. It's a three-year contract with an option. This is through 2026. Um, this player will finally have their driver's license at that point because currently she doesn't. It's it's so impressive. It is so cool. I mean, kind of the way it all came out, there's a, a lot of cool quotes from this type of player out there on the internet. Um, Mark Parsons, the, the new head coach at Washington Spirit, who was formerly with Portland Thorns and actually got Olivia Moultrie to the Thorns. Yep. Um, I think that's kind of also an important note to, to take out of this one. But uh, Mark Parsons asked, inviting her to preseason camp in January um, and, and coming from Michigan, Ricketts made herself there and, and clearly impressed and did well. Um, 
it's, I mean, she's 15 years old, Sandra. I want to know That's what were you fun. doing as a sophomore in high school? Because I sure wasn't signing professional contracts. No, I was definitely not even thinking about being a professional anything, let alone a professional uh, soccer player. But um, no, I think that, I mean, I'm with you. I think that's an important note um, that she's going to start a professional career with the spirit and, and with, with Mark Parsons. He's not, um, he's someone who's not unfamiliar with uh, going through the uh, development process with, with young players on a team, you know, 2021 was when Olivia Moultrie really made that leap to, to the pros and, um, and it wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy. No, no. Long story for her to, to sort of make the breakthrough and become a pro in, in, in NWSL. Uh, because at the time there wasn't, uh, there didn't exist uh, the mechanism that exists now back then in 2021, which is only a couple of years ago. And we're talking about it like way back then, but it's true. It's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see how more young players may or may not make the decision to, to go pro uh because now there is, uh, you know, a new under 18 entry mechanism that exists within the league. And this is the way in which Ricketts was able to sign uh, with uh, with the spirit. So there's a number of things that come in, come with that. Right. So this means entering the league through the the under 18 entry mechanism that she has to reside, you know, with a parent or legal guardian until she turns 18. She can't be traded or waived without her or her guardian's consent. And this, I think this is an important note in terms of the length of the contract as well. And the fact that she's, you know, in under the, the entry mechanism because she can't be selected by any new clubs in any ex, uh, expansion drafts, which is, I think something else to, to know the fact that there's going to be a, a an eventual double expansion again for this league as, as soon as next year in 2024. But her new contract and her ent her entry into the league through the under-18 entry mechanism means that she's going to be with the spirit even within uh, something like a double um, expansion draft as well. So it's, it's an opportunity for her to begin her career as a pro and at least for these next few years know that she is going to be a Washington spirit player. Yeah, and I have that consistency. Um, and I think that's why the rule, right, is in place for these players that are under 18, that they do still have to live with the parent and guardian, right? It provides a sense of normalcy in what is otherwise not a normal high school life for a, a player at 15 years old. Um, I mean, she she needs a parent or guardian to drive her to practice every day. <laughs> it's, just, it's so cool. Like, honestly, I'm, I am so excited to watch Ricketts play this year. I think that this Washington Spirit team is a team that is looking to make changes and looking to make improvement in their year last year i mean you go from first to worst essentially uh in back-to-back -back years how are you going to change it i think a signing like this in chloe ricketts is massive um she's from michigan and and played in usl league two last year um with afc ann arbor so she already has the the caliber of playing um with that she's played historically with boys teams mostly right all of the viral clips that have gone out I mean you can follow attacking third on Twitter Instagram TikTok we've got video of her and she's schooling boys like it, it's the coolest thing um, to see she won in 2021 so two years ago when Olivia Moultrie was trying to do this um, Ricketts is winning the Michigan State Cup and the National League Great Lakes Conference um, with a boys team in, in Ann Arbor with the Tigers so this is a player that already has had a lot of success um um, and now she gets to do it at, at this top level in the States. It's really exciting. I'm really happy for this player. And I think Washington spirit fans are pretty excited too, because as you said, they don't just get her for this year. They get her for three years and not just because of the contract, but because yeah. she can't go anywhere until she's 18. And that's pretty. Yeah, no, and I'm, I'm eager to, to see how they plan on utilizing her. I mean, Moultrie is, is a talented player, but not necessarily someone who has, um, been a consistent part of starting 11s, right? Has she yeah. cracked starting 11s? Yes, absolutely. But this this is an, this is still a really, really young player, not someone that we've seen sort of utilized in a week in, week out, constant starting 11 kind of basis. So these are young players. So it was just sort of thinking about how her time with Parsons out there and then sort of thinking about like this new signing in Ricketts and how this is another young player. Um, I, yeah, I anticipate we're going to see this player in 2023, yeah. but I don't, I don't think this is a player that we're going to see on, um, you know, through weeks long right. kind of, yeah. you know, starting 11s, but yeah. uh, I mean, I'm eager, to, I'm eager to see it though and see how it looks. Uh, yeah. I mean, and she, still, players. she will still be completing, competing, completing online schooling. Um, yep. 
Yeah, I wonder if like Ricketts and Moultrie have chit chatted. You know, just they, like, gotta, they have to. I, right? I hope so. I would hope so. Right at this point, just about like Parsons being young in this league, the, the adjustments. I'd want to yeah. listen to that conversation. I'd be very interested. Um, yeah, just you know, teens cool. being teens and talking yeah. about professional athlete yeah. things. You you love you love to see it. Love to hear it. Uh, let's talk professional about athlete things and like high school things. It's so cool. So I, I have an assignment due. I can't believe I got to go to practice right after this. Oh my goodness! Yeah, no, same energy. Honestly, prom, prom, the we've all, we've, prom, spring formal. We've all, you know. we've all got deadlines, right? It's apparently, if you're a teenage uh, professional athlete or or a, a, a co-host of Attacking Third, we're all mm-hmm. we all are in a similar deadline kind of uh, energy here. Uh, let's keep talking about some some signings across the league. Let's talk a little bit about Gotham's most recent contract deal. With Mitch Purse, Gotham signs Mitch Purse to a multi-year deal. The club announced that uh, she will be with the club through 2024 in a deal that includes an option for the 2025 season. I like this. I, I thought it was um, thought it was an important uh, contract. I think for for this club, um, getting done. I mean, Purse is someone yeah. who. Purse is someone who's been with this team since 2020. And they recently had, you know, in this announcement, adjacent to this announcement, the club had some uh, media availability as well. And it was cool to sort of sit in on that and hear uh, from Purse about a number of things. Um, one of those obviously was the big, the big news was the contract. Um, but I got to ask her uh, about, you know, being with Gotham, um, and sort of like her evolution alongside a club that has also evolved. Um, because I remember when she arrived to this East Coast team, it was still Sky Blue FC. It was a trade that happened um, before their rebrand. So she has been with them since that rebrand. They rebranded like months later. Um, there was like this sort of renewed energy, you know, that they had gotten these young players. And I don't, I don't know if people remember this. It was a very brief and fleeting moment in time but Mallory Swanson was also yeah, traded to the Sky Blue at the time so there was like this this synergy around this team it wasn't just like the rebrand it was like oh it's like they're gonna build something here right and they're and Gotham is sort of still in that process it just sort of feels like this year they're kind of hitting the reset button again because after going to the playoffs in 2021 they had a really tough last place finish in 2022 and I think it's just very cool that in all of these moving parts, because there have been a lot of moving parts, I think, for, for Gotham over the last couple of seasons, whether it's been in the coaching side or player turnover as well, uh, it's important to note that as you're building towards something, you want that to include some of these core pieces that you initially brought in. And I think the mm-hmm. fact that that signals this, this type of new contract extension signals that, that, you know, they want to ensure that if they do go anywhere and earn some type of success, winning titles and whatever that looks like, that that's going to include someone like a Mitch purse moving forward. Yeah. I think this is massive for both player and club. It, this is good for Gotham, right? They, they just got a Lynn Williams in the off season. Um, they have an older team. They do. And, and Pidge now Midge now entering, um, her seventh season in the NWSL. She's a veteran uh, in this league with a lot of caps with the U S women's national team. She's worked her way back into that roster. She's Mm -hmm. faced a lot of adversity, which also gives her a little bit of that veteran chip on her shoulder. And I think that's kind of what Gotham needs heading into this. season. they need a little bit of that uh, understanding of not only the league, but of being not great in the league and and understanding what it's like to really work hard week in and week out and not see results on the field. Right. Because that's how you can like dive deep within and grow to get better. But also with Midge, I mean, she's incredibly talented. This is a player that can score goals. She can assist. Um, She's got the ability on the pitch to create for herself and for the players around her. And I think the more that they have a little bit of that consistency with this Gotham side, and and that's including someone like a Victoria Pickett in the midfield or a Kristen Ewis in the midfield who were were getting into the swing of things. Um, And I mean, also, right. You look at a player like Midge first, 
off the pitch, she's incredible. And I think that's also a, a direction that Gotham is hoping to grow and continue to move their club in. I mean, she was named to Forbes's 30 under 30, right? She was on Harvard's University Board of Overseers as like the youngest person ever to do that. She's been in the White House as um, an advocate. It's This is a player and a person that if if she wants to be at your club, you're going to keep her around. And I think that's what this shows. And that's what it shows about it. Um, I think it's a good fit for Mitch too, right? This is kind of how yeah. she worked her way back from injury and worked her way back into the U S women's national team. Yeah. I'm excited to see what, what 2023 yeah. holds uh, for her. You know, it was cool to, to sit in on that media availability and um, she keeps it real. She's like, you know, 2022 was not a year that went the way she wanted, you know, and um, it's, it's, it's cool to hear that she's already looking ahead and wants to like, kind of hit the ground running uh, with this team in, in 2023. So um, she definitely expanded on the question that I asked her. So check it out. It's on .com. Mitch Purse signing with uh, the, the multi-year deal with uh, with Gotham. And uh, you could read more about what she thinks about calling Gotham home for the yeah. next uh, few years. I love that plug for sure. Do it. And and I mean, you talked about how she's looking to level up and, and she talked about that, right? The, what's it, what was it called? The off season? Yeah that she created because yeah. basically she invited other NWSL players down to Florida in the off season mm -hmm. to train in a high level competitive area because she realized herself that as a player, she wasn't getting better training individually every single day in the off season. She needed that team environment, not only um, to be able to pass and shoot and have that competition, but to be able to like level up with one another and to push each other. So she created quote the off season, which was like yeah. a little camp for these players in the off season to go to Florida and compete. And I think that's, she didn't just say, Hey, I want to do better this off season. I want to do more. She created the environment for herself that she needed to succeed and do that. Um, it, it, that's impressive. I'm excited yeah. to see kind of how it transforms to the pitch. And, and no, I'm with you. Then. It's a, it's a big piece for them both on and, and, and off the pitch and in and out of, of the locker room. The cool thing about this media availability too, is we got to see the unveiling of Gotham's new kits. It was spoiled a little bit by some news within the same day, which we will talk about later in the episode, but Gotham's new kit for 2023 is out and quote, this kit signifies the places we are proud to represent and the continued evolution of the Gotham FC brand. If you're not joining us on our YouTube version of this episode, we've got images up for you to take a look at, but it's uh, it's cool. Still going with sort of the the black and the, uh, the sort of off-colored kind of, I don't know, would you call it like an off-colored teal? Yeah. What do you call light this color? Blue. Light blue. A it's light blue. blue. Yeah, it's it's very pretty, honestly. I mean, I just like the new kits. This is when we get them all. It's so fun, yeah. like dropping them in the show and talking about them. It's fun to go buy them too. Hit up your yeah. team store. Plug, plug, plug. Definitely yeah. go take a look at them. Yeah, no, it's cool to see everybody filter in and and get their perspective on on the kits as well. Uh, kit fashion is, you know, it's it, this is the time of the year where we're always talking about it. Maybe maybe once all of them get unveiled and we sort of take a look at them. Um, sort of side by side. Maybe we'll do a little Ooh, bit let's of rate them. kit ranking. Yeah, love that. Love let's that. do that. A little fashion attacking third kit rating. Heck Into yeah. Into that. Into that. Uh, let's uh, let's keep chatting about some some news. Uh, Megan Rapino in the news as well. Time Woman of the Year for 2023. Uh, and the announcement is one of 12 extraordinary leaders chosen by Time working towards a more equal world. So shout out to Megan Rapino for receiving uh, such a prestigious accolade, really. We were just chatting a little bit off mic. It's so funny when we content plan these things and we're like, God, like I've almost lost track of some of the accolades that Megan Rapino has earned um, really in kind of just like this short window from like even 29 like post 2019 world cup to to now and this is just like another one of those things um you know that she can point to and say yeah she's like i, I earned this too <laughs> yeah one of 12 women is uh megan rubino named to this list but she's just done so much right with the, the equal pay fight for the united states women's national team um the gender equality fight that megan rubino is also fighting and and now we see as it kind of uh, especially the equality pay act really 
kind of snowballing into other federations that we've been talking about here on the show. It's been all over the news. We saw it throughout the She Believes Cup with Canada. And um, there's a lot more to come of it. And a lot of people credit that to the voice of Megan Rapinoe and what she was able to do in fighting those things and speaking up about it. Um, She's done a lot. She's taken a lot of big steps forward on the global stage with equal pay for the United States. Um, But big honor for her. It's, it's very well deserved. And yeah, I mean, there's so many things she's done. We were kind of like, wait, what else? She, she didn't yeah. she win this already. I mean, it's still <laughs> amazing, but I was like, I think this is, she's done this before. It was, it was like deja cool. vu. We were like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, she's already, she's, has she won this? So uh, very yeah. cool for Rapino. Very, very yeah. cool. Congratulations to Megan Rapino. Uh, NWSL and Liga MX uh, Feminine on tour, maybe like taking a little bit of a cue from uh, like our theme is on tour this year. And we're getting to see in the preseason here for NWSL, a lot of uh, crossover uh, between NWSL and Liga MX Feminine. OL Reign recently announced that partnership with Club America and they went ahead and participated in a scrimmage with Club America. OL Reign, the victors in that one, three, one winners in a friendly against Club America uh, there were a couple goal scorers, uh, uh, ZR King getting on uh, the scoreboard in, in this one. There was also an own goal, and unfortunately, in this one as well. But uh, congratulations to all Rain, the, the first of what's likely to get, be the first step of, of this uh, partnership uh, between them and, and Club America. But, but the North Carolina Courage we wanted to chat a little bit about as well. Apparently, they're just like touring. Uh, they're on <laughs> tour in Mexico. Uh, they have a friendly that is going to come up against Rayadas, but that is in Monterrey. And right now they're actually Mexico City, so maybe they're waking, making their way kind of back up north. Uh, but we've seen them apparently have some scrimmages against some other teams. And Mexico City is home to a lot of iconic uh, Liga Mekis feminine uh, teams and, and brands. So we've seen like Cruz Azul. I saw like Pumas out there, and uh, a lot of teams you can you could sort of I guess pick up a quick scrimmage against if you happen to be in Mexico City. But eventually, this is all going to lead uh, back to this this big game against Rayada. So hopefully, uh, we get to talk a lot about another match that. Yeah. Uh, has uh, NWSL as the winners in it as well. We'll see what happens there. But before we pivot to a break, we got to chat about some pretty exciting news. Well, we kind of teased a little bit because we saw some sourced info dropping by uh, Gamer Insider, but now it's official. The NWSL and EA Sports collaboration is taking off. The NWSL will be a part of EA Sports FIFA 23 beginning March 15 across any gaming platform that you utilize. So I think I saw like Xbox one, we saw PS five, I think we saw streaming there. So a lot of stuff there, they're going to be able to go ahead and compete as any of the 12 NWSL teams. They're all going to be present within the game. Uh, You could do kickoff tournament mode, head to head season, co-op seasons. There's going to be online friendlies, Lisa, I'm just saying. I know. And and there's going to be a couple NWSL stadiums that are featured within the game, including the authentic kits, uh, trophies, celebrations. And uh, we mentioned the kits because when they dropped this news, everybody got to see Gotham's kit. And so it was like we're talking just hours difference uh, from the unveiling. So um, scooped, right? Super but cool, well, with good reason, with good reason. With very good reason. This is so cool. This is so cool. I mean, I know we talked about it last week when this news did come out or whenever that was, but the fact that it's actually launching March 15th, which is just 10 days before the NWSL regular season starts, the 11th season, um, and all 12 teams are on here. You can play them. I think the it's very, very cool that they're doing some NWSL-specific stadiums in there. I think that is so well-deserved. I mean, I, this is the coolest thing. This is the coolest thing. I'm going to uh, exposing myself. I'm going to start playing video games because of this. Like I'm so jazzed about this. The fact that there's also going to be celebrations like, hello, I can't wait for Lola Levanta's celebrations. Like this, I'm going to play her score all the goals and then just celebrate constantly and see what else she's got up her sleeves. I, I know that when we talked to Lola Levanta last year with Kansas city, we were like, do you, are these preconceived celebrations? How are you coming up with these? And she was like, I really, I just kind of do them. I, I get them prepared in my head and then I just knock them down. My teammates help me out. I wonder if like now she'll be getting a little bit of 
like inspiration from the video game like i don't know how this no, is maybe i'm excited about it but we got to see yeah. all the players um they did a really cool promo we've got yeah. videos of it out on our social media as well attacking third um you can see all your favorite players your favorite stars because every single team all the players it this is so cool this the is trailer so cool. the trailer was was really cool i loved watching the trailer i i also i just like yeah you got to see some of the kits you got to see some of the some of your favorite players you know in video game form and it was just so cool to see this isn't the first time there's been um you know a, a ver some version or iteration of women's soccer within the game but so often it didn't include like club licensing so we didn't see nwsl for a very very long time we saw like is the national team we saw the national team and you got to go and, and play as them and that was in itself was was pretty cool um but we slowly started to see the integration of more club teams. And so now we get to see NWSL players and the graphics on this looks like so much better than when the, the end, the, the national team uh, sort of profiles came out. So it's very cool to see like all the updated graphics and all the updated imaging. And I mean, uh, yeah, I can't wait to hopefully get to play as Turner Davidson and score 15 goals as a defender. It'd be great. I cannot wait. I mean, yeah, when we saw, when I first saw the imaging and the, and the trailer for it, like if you, I don't, I don't play a lot of video games, but I was like, these look, this looks real. Like if I were to glance at this picture, I would be like, this is a real picture of all these athletes, but it's not, it's, that's the coolest thing. But yes, Sandra, I am ready to play. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a little live play here on, on YouTube. Um, you and I against each yeah. other and it ain't going to be pretty Tierna Davidson and score all the goals against me. Um, yeah, not, not going to be pretty for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who knows? We'll see. We'll have to figure it out. Stay, st stay tuned uh, with us and, and to see if uh, we're going to have that content for you rolling forward. But make sure you stay tuned on this episode because we've got a, a little bit more news and notes to chat about with you all. Maybe this time we're going across the globe. So stick around after a quick break. Welcome to the UEFA Europa League on Paramount+. Plus. What a night! Your home for more ultra-competitive world-class soccer where Europe's elite and soccer Cinderella's pump out that one-of-a-kind white-knuckle excitement that grows with every cut, every cross, and each and every... Goal! The UEFA Europa League. Stream every match live exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. All right, let's chat a little bit about uh, maybe an update for the French women, the France women's national team and Canada soccer as well. Uh, we have an episode out there, our, our previous news and notes episode, where we talked at length about uh, France and their current state of affairs. There have been some very minor updates uh, in light of so many prolific players um, announcing that they need to step away uh, for personal reasons and their mental health due to the current culture uh, mm -hmm. that exists uh, within the, within uh, the soccer federation there. So the most recent uh, updates, uh, there's ongoing meetings apparently um, between players, uh, between uh, parties within the federation. Uh, the status of the current manager, Corinne Diacre, is still up in the air. There, as of this recording, there hasn't been an official announcement of a termination or a new head coach to be named anytime soon. But that doesn't mean that that's going to stop possible rumors about who may and may not be connected. The most recent um, sort of uh, coming to light, uh, I believe it's out of RMC Sports, uh, mentioning that uh, Herb Renard is possibly in consideration to be named as, uh, as a head coach, which might be out of left field for some, might not be out of left field for others. I think the instant reaction to this for me is, Hey, like this is someone who's apparently strong in tournaments, although I, I'm not too familiar with the background in terms of connection to uh, women's soccer. Uh, so we'll see. I think folks might remember this name or this coach from the most recent World Cup uh, with Saudi Arabia and that very historic win that they got against Argentina. Um, very animated, uh, very much wants to, you know, command a, a locker room and, and, and motivate. Um, so I, I'm not too sure if that's the fit or if that's the direction, um, but maybe that's why there's no real update 
just yet as to the next path or next step that uh, France is going to take. But there is an official update for Canada Soccer, which is the other team that we were talking about in our previous News and Notes episode as well. We talked about these two federations specifically just because they are going to uh, meet in the next international window in April. So while France uh, apparently is still ongoing, uh, Canada Soccer has reached uh, an interim funding deal um, for really last year's sort of back pay. So Canada Soccer announced a deal with the team, which they say is similar to that of the men's team for appearance fees and results-based bonuses. And according to the Players Association, a permanent deal has not been reached due to a multitude of factors, uh, which is follows the repeated failure by Canada Soccer to yeah. properly disclose financial numbers, um, the Canada Soccer business deal, which they say pulls money away from national teams, and of course, the ongoing fights for an agreement that establishes fair and equitable standards. So maybe some mixed messaging here. Yeah. Um, which Party we've stuff. been getting the whole time, right? It, that's it's really been the one consistent throughout all of this is mixed messaging, meaning the players state one thing and, and what they've experienced and Canada soccer comes out and says, no, this is what we decided that it was never true. That was never right. And, and the players come back out and say, no, we never agreed to that either. It's very messy. It's very messy. And I can't imagine going through it as a player. Honestly, I can't all while, you're either playing in a season right now or you're preparing for your season and you're in preseason or you're competing with your national team and you still have to do all of these meetings and negotiations. It's a lot. I can't, I literally cannot imagine it for these players. I, I feel so horrible for them that um, this is yeah. kind of how everything has come about and this is what it's come to, but now they're fighting and they're speaking up for themselves and, and they're still looking to play, right? These players, it's not like they want to, stay home and not compete they they want to they want to go to the world cup they want to win they want a chance at that um yeah and it's just not as simple as it should be for them yeah it's um again it's just like one of these scenes is just ongoing and we're just sort of taking the new information as it comes and reacting to that and it's just it's unfortunate that even even though we're doing that and kind of ha we have this sort of wait and see approach there's still just that i don't want to say feeling of dread but it's just like that feeling where you're just like, Jesus, like we're just, this still isn't resolved, you know, and, and we're months out of, away from a world cup and we're literal weeks away from these specific federations and these two national teams um, going head to head. So they, they have as of right now, a friendly uh, on scheduled on the books for April 11th in France in Le Mans, you know, and um We'll, we'll see. We'll just have to continue to, to see uh, the updates that come out between, you know, the Canadian players and their federation and the coaching decision um, for France and their national team as well. But um, perhaps in a bit of news that isn't so tied to better resources and better conditions for these players, a very, very uh, fun piece of content got dropped. Disney Plus uh, getting in on the sports business as well. They've announced a new six-part documentary series titled Matilda's, the World Cup at our feet. It is going to premiere on April 26. A big deal because guess Huge. who's going to be in 2023? Australia and New Zealand. It's very cool. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a like documentary. I mean, as you mentioned, a six part series about the Matildas um, as they prepare to host the FIFA Women's World Cup. Um, they're hosting it alongside Australia and New Zealand. Um, and it's all going to lead up to the first game of the 2020, 2022 AFC Women's Asian Cup uh, for this team. So kind of like the path and the journey for Australia's women's national team the Matildas um into the basically the biggest tournament before the world cup for them and and all that they're able to do what, what was the qualifying tournament um despite them already being qualified this is very cool for a million different reasons um of course one that's going to attract global attention is because of Sam Kerr right the leader the captain of this team Chelsea Star um she's record holder in the NWSL I mean everyone knows Sam Kerr in in the women's football world and now we get to follow her and her national team in this little docu-series where she just dominates and 
this is very cool. This is very special. I love that it's also premiering um, in the middle of April. So just a few months out from the World Cup. That's how we gain traction and global attention, right, for the the World Cup that is to come because it – it is going to be the biggest thing ever this year and you've got to start it early. And I think that Disney plus getting in on this, like great job. This is fa- yes. fantastic. I can't wait to watch it. I do you have Disney plus I have Disney plus. I do. And I'm really excited to watch this. I wonder if it'll be uh, like all episodes at once, all six docuseries at once. Right. That's yeah. now, like so many streaming services are going back to drop one on like a Sunday night and then we have to wait seven days. So I hope it's I'm, all so we can just binge it. I, I you know what I, I don't know if that would work with like a sports doc. So hopefully it's like all at once. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll see. I think it's a great team to sort of rally or uh, this type of project around. Um, and we'll see. I mean, we've we've done a, a lot of World Cup content already. We've talked about uh, you know Matilda's as host and and what type of pressure or non pressures that might carry with them. Um, and I'm already like so hyped about this <laughs> with the little, the poster that they put out and um, uh, highlighting. Yeah, of course, uh, Sam Kerr, but I'm really eager to sort of see the insights of, you know, whether it's like a Mary Flowers or Caleb Ford or just so many other awesome players on the Matildas. So uh, stay tuned. I know where I'll be on April 26 and I'll know where I'll be after a quick break right here on A3. So stay tuned. At stake, the chance to put on the iconic green jacket. So golfers, are you ready? Go! It's a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. All right, we want to chat a little bit about Women's Super League before we close out this episode. I told you, we were, we're taking a little trip around the globe. And of course, we're going to end it in uh, good old England. Let's talk a little <laughs> bit about uh, the Conti Cup, the FA Continental Tires Cup. Oh, Arsenal, a fun name. <laughs> Arsenal, the winners in this one, 3-1 victory over Chelsea. They just, they just, the Gunners have the Blues number when it comes to the Conti Cup. It almost looked and felt like maybe that wasn't going to be the case, though. Listen, Sam Kerr got things started very early in this game against Arsenal. We're talking the opening two minutes. Who else but Giro riding with the service into the box? Sam Kerr there to put it away. And it just looked like they were going to run away with this. But I loved that Arsenal was like, not today. Like, no way. This is not going to happen. They sort of... You know, they put their heads on and they just they kind of went toe to toe a little bit. I just it just sort of looked like there was going to be a lot of um, running around. And it, and there was there was we saw the legs moving, moving hard out there. But Arsenal with the equalizer in the 16th minute from Black Stinius, uh, Kim Little with the conversion in the 24th minute. And at that point, you're like two to one. Just get into just get into the locker room, maybe reset. But. It just it get it got a little worse before yeah. before before Chelsea could court, kind of kind of regroup. There was a tactical shift to try to buy him a haze to try to maybe combat some of this stuff. Didn't didn't work. Uh, and an own goal, unfortunately, to close out this first half for Arsenal. And uh, it's three one, and that's how it remained through the duration of of this match. And uh, yeah, good on Arsenal lifting the cup once yeah. more. Massive, massive. I mean, it's their their first trophy in four years for Arsenal. But for Chelsea, the fact that it does, I love that you just ran through like kind of the breakdown of the game because it was Chelsea fans were sitting high and mighty the first two minutes of the game. They're like, all right, Sam Kerr, this is easy. Just run it back another one. Um, But before you know it, Arsenal responds, 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 put pressure on. Fantastic. And then, I mean, to go into the locker room, down 3-1 after you scored the opening goal is pretty, pretty rough for Chelsea. Uh, but they they persevere throughout the second half. They don't give up anymore. And then it does end 3-1. Um, it was a very fun game to watch. Beth Mead putting okay. it out there on Twitter. The girls doing you proud mama Conti champs. I love this. The picture out there. If you're joining us live on YouTube, um, it's very cool. I, we've got a graphic up of Beth Mead's tweet and, and the little image there. I mean, this was so fun. This was fun. There's no VAR through it. So there was a little bit of some questionable oh. calls happening, uh, but no possibility of a review as it went down. But um, overall, Arsenal 
make the breakthrough. They they crack through early and hard and fast and then just stick it to Chelsea in the Conti Cup. In front of a great crowd too. Love yeah. the love the Crystal Crystal Palace and just taking a look at uh, sights and sounds from there was was very very cool. Oh, wow. and it was also just sort of like um yeah, record breaking for sure. Um just sort of like seeing like this adjacent to the you know the actual FA Women's Super League, just how, just sort of how the game sort of taking place, but before the, mm-hmm. the weekend prior to to the Conti Cup, and now we've got a couple games that are coming up this this upcoming cool. um, week as well. Um, but you know the standings when it comes to to Women's Super League have uh, shifted a little bit. Last time we chatted about um, teams and and their place on on the table, uh, Man United. And number one right now, Man City at number two, Chelsea at number three, and Arsenal at number four. So taking a look at maybe the top four teams and how things can shift around. Um, Chelsea, though, and Arsenal with a couple of games still under their belt to try to, you know, get level here. But uh, between these top four teams, 14 games played for for both uh, Man City and Man United and Chelsea and Arsenal with with two. So I, we had said in the last time we chatted about the standings, Lisa, we had said that this, this top four might shift a little bit more before this right. regular season is out, but I love that. It's so close right now. So close. That's the coolest thing, right? 35 points for um, Man United city's got 32 Chelsea, 31 Arsenal, 26. And as you mentioned um, two game days or two match days for Chelsea and Arsenal that, that they're behind at this point. But when you look at, the Conti Cup. I like that we we started with that and then we moved right into the standings for the Super League because Arsenal won the Conti Cup in 2018 and then they went on to win the league the following season. So is this uh, a little bit fortuitous, fortuitous for this Arsenal side? They just won Conti. Right. They're sitting in the standings right now, number four, 26 points, but they've got a couple game days to still make up at this point. Is this... Are we going to see the tides turn a little bit? I hope so. Look, I, I, do I love uh, it. I like the comp- the competition for these top four teams. It's so tight. I love a, I love a long season that needs to come down to the wire on a final match weekend. I mean that when we have talked about uh, women's super league in the past, it's been reflective of the more recent seasons and how things have tended to come down to the final sort of match weekends for for some of these teams and kind of just feels like it's rearing its its season to to end in a similar fashion. Now, which of those teams are going to be the two teams or three teams that are vying for that uh, actual title? That's, I think, is still up in the air. Yeah. Um, but I love that it's uh, this close. And, you know, I love that there's so many players who are – that you can point out and sort of tie to these respective clubs – that are just doing so many good things uh, to keep their team in, in contention. Um, Bunny Shaw still leading the way in this sort of golden boot race, 13 goals with Manchester city coming off a hat trick, no. like just no, wild no. things for, for Shaw. You love to see it. Uh, shout out to the reggae girls, CONCACAF supremacy in full action. You love to see it. Uh, Rachel Daly with 10 goals right behind Shaw. Um, but yeah, I mean, mentioned uh, Girl Wrighton during the the Conti Cup uh, recap there, but leading um, the league right now and in assist with with nine, love that. Uh, I think she's been an essential piece for Chelsea this season. But um, yeah, been an exciting time. I, every time we peek in on, on Women's Super League, it's just it's been closer than than anticipated. And and while it might you know, still come down to sort of those typical four teams that I think we've chatted around uh, over the last few seasons. Um, it's still exciting to sort of see. And, it yeah. I mean, and the personnel too, right. As you mentioned, ben, Bunny Shaw getting a hat trick this weekend, leading the golden boot race. Like the, it's so fun. The talent in this league is so fun. Um, especially when you get some of those top teams going up against each other in, in matches that are upcoming. That's what's pretty fun. We got, Match day 14, 15 coming up for some of these teams in, in the next couple of days, um, Wednesday of this week, and then this weekend a couple more matches for everyone. Um, but it's good. I mean, lots to play for, lots on the make, line. Make sure you tune in 
to Paramount Plus, yep. and you can find okay. Barclay Women's Super League on Paramount Plus, and you could take a look at the schedule in front of you and say, hey, this is the game that I want to watch, because you can watch them on Paramount Plus and across CBS Sports Network. So make sure you get to You can't in. watch NWSL yet. You can't watch 99% of these preseason games, so watch some Super League. What the Super League. That's it for today. Thank you all so much for listening to Attacking Third. Download, follow, and listen to us anywhere you get your podcast. You can watch us too. Subscribe to us on YouTube to get alerts for whenever we go live at youtube.com slash attacking third. We'll be back with even more content for you all. So stick around and stay tuned. For Sandra Rada and Lisa Roman, this was Attacking Third. <laughs>